Thanks be to God. starts a deep breath. 
a courageous truth, a humble heart. Prepare the way, peace whispers, for the Lord comes to make the broken whole. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. Light one candle for joy, because the world is broken and the wait is long, but our joy cannot be contained. Like a toddler toppling the thrones of power with a gleeful swipe, joy pierces our silence with song, interrupts our sighs with laughter. My soul magnifies the Lord, joy whispers, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So we light one candle, because it only takes one. Christ with us. Light one candle for love, because the world is broken and the wait is long, but love never ends. Love faithfully goes about the work of casting out fear, speaking truth, healing the deepest wounds, crossing the divide from this world to the next and back again. Here I am, love whispers, the servant of the Lord. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. Because the world is broken and the wait is long. But Christ is with us through it all. In a humble manger in a backwater town, a baby. On a convex cross, a king. In every heart and every home. Where hope, peace, joy, and love endure, Christ with us. Glory to God in the highest heaven, the light whispers. And peace to all on earth. So we light one candle, because it only takes one, Christ with us. Let us pray. We greet your coming, God, with wonder. You came to be with us, yet you remain far greater than we can imagine. We greet your coming, God, with repentance. We are satisfied with ourselves, but your presence exposes our sin and failure. We are proud of our understanding, but you show us that we do not know everything. We greet your coming, God, with joy. We felt our life could be of no importance to you, but you have shown its value by appearing among us in Jesus Christ. We know the gulf between us and you, but you have bridged it with love. God, we greet your coming in Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose blessed name we pray. Amen.
providing a special keepsake at Christmas for all who have experienced the loss of a loved one in the recent past. This year we will continue the tradition, which is especially important in this year of grief and loss, at our 8 p.m. Christmas Eve service outdoors. So may these handmade angels honor the memory of the one you have lost. This Christmas Eve, we also close our 40 days of prayer for the church. We commit our future and the future of our church to God's will, as Jesus committed himself to his Father's will when he was born as a child at Christmas. Let us seal our covenant by praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch o'er their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary the mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. More than 2,000 years ago, God sent his son, Jesus, to be born our Savior. Jesus was born to save us from our sins, born so that we may be free to live with God forever. Let us rejoice greatly this Christmas season, for unto all of us a Savior is born.
Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and their child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. One of my Facebook friends works in a housing ministry. And last year he posted this story uh, on Facebook, which I think he did just out of sheer frustration. And he said that uh, the previous year, he was attending a church that uh, was going to open an emergency winter shelter for the homeless after Christmas. Well, he contacted the church before Christmas to ask if they would be willing to allow him to set up the shelter a little bit ahead of time, right before Christmas Eve, because he had become aware of a woman and her disabled
Think about this, parents. Do you remember back to when your children were born? Especially that first one. That moment after the baby first is laid into your arms and time seems to stand still. And all you can think about is the miracle of life. And you want to be able to stop it right there and hold that child and just marvel amazing new life and you want to be able to count fingers and toes it's like can we just hold everything just let's not go anywhere else but then everything changes because of course then the baby needs to be clean and fed and changed and swaddled and now the hard work of parenting begins you can't just stop time you have work to do I wonder if the same thing happened for Mary and Joseph right after the child was born. After the blood and the hard labor and the pain and the fear and the mess and the dirt and the smell of that stable, all of a sudden, there's the baby, the miracle child, the angel was right. Did they just want to stop right there and pause time and marvel at the miracle they were holding in their arms? But yet, reality intrudes because the miracle child was a really fully human being and he needed to be clean and fed and swaddled and laid in that manger of straw. The hard work of parenting even a miracle child had to begin. You couldn't just stop and enjoy the moment for very long. And consider the shepherds, too. You know, the shepherds had work to do. Um, they came in response to what they, what they had seen and heard from the angels, and they found the miracle child there waiting for them. And they, they must have fallen to their knees in awe and wonder at what they were beholding. But they couldn't stay there forever either. They had to get back to their sheep. The sheep needed tending. They had work to do. And remember what they did on the way, as Luke tells us. On their way, the shepherds told everyone they encountered what they had seen and heard. They told everyone about the miracle. They shared the miracle with their whole world. So yes, we come to behold the miracle, but the miracle has a call on our lives. Not just tonight, but every day of our lives. You know, like at Christmas time, we just we love the old stories, we love the carols, we love the songs, and we would like to be able to hold on to this moment. We'd like to be able to keep the joy of Christmas in our hearts all year round, wouldn't we? The miracle child born on Christmas Eve says to us, ah, you can, you can do that, and here's how. There's a trick to it. First, we do come to behold. We come to behold because we need time in the manger. We need to be refreshed. We need to have our spirits made whole again, especially this year. We all know how bad this year has been. So we come to the manger on Christmas Eve. And what about every other day of our lives? We spend our lives with Jesus. We have to stay in his presence so that we are renewed. We have to be filled up because the world out there will drain us faster than you can ever imagine. And then, after we are filled with joy and wonder, we go out to share that joy and wonder with everyone we encounter. Again, especially this year. In a year of pandemic and sickness and death and fear and division and hate, people are longing for hope. They need to hear the good news that God so loved the world that he became 
one of us, to save us from ourselves. He became flesh, and not just any flesh, he became a helpless child, and he became a helpless child born to a poor family that couldn't even find a place to stay on Christmas Eve. Who do you know who needs to hear this good news? And then from there, we go out to live the miracle, to be the miracle for the world. Because, you know, it's really easy for me to be all self-righteous about churches that have no room in the end for a homeless family. But the question is, what would I have done in that position, and what will I do in the future faced with any similar situation? What will we do as a church in the future faced with the needs of the world around us? What do we do? We reach out to the least and the last and the lost. We embrace them with the love of Jesus. We welcome them into our fellowship. We meet the needs of the poor and the sick and the homeless and the oppressed, those who no one else wants, the people who are rejected and outcast. And in the process, we tell them how much Jesus loves them. And in that way, we live the miracle. We are the miracle. That's how people believe the Christmas story. They believe it when they see us living it out day by day in our everyday lives. I have a friend. Her husband's in jail. It's one of the worst things you can imagine for a nice middle class family. And you know, it would have been perfectly understandable for her to just shut down and close herself off from the rest of the world and hide away and wait for this to be over. But you know what she did? She decided to go out and open herself instead to the people who have husbands, loved ones, sons, fathers in prison. When she goes to visit her husband, and of course she hasn't been able to do it for a while because of the pandemic, but when she goes, she makes connections with her loved ones who are in the waiting room. She does a little impromptu counseling sometimes, a little relationship counseling for those who are struggling. She makes connections with the inmates. She writes to them. She sends them inspirational and spiritual material. She sends them scriptures. She sends them devotionals. She loves those people. She just told me the other night, these are human beings. They are not bad people. Some of them have made really, really stupid decisions. And let me tell you, they, these people, by and large, are completely different. They come from a completely different segment of society than she does. But she's managed to find how to be the miracle to them. She is a miracle. She has learned how to live the miracle. And that's our call on Christmas Eve and every night of our lives and every day of our lives. We come to behold the miracle. And then we go to live the miracle. Thanks be to God. Amen.
be together physically in this service to give. Let us pray for our offering in whatever way we intend to give. Join me in prayer. There are so many reasons, Lord, to be thankful this Christmas Eve. Receive these tokens of our gratitude for your love incarnate in the child of Bethlehem. May they become God with us for all the world. May they breathe joy into a world that needs a sense of wonder. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. As we begin the service of candle lighting, Megan will play silent lighting, and I will light my candle from the Christ candle in the center, and then I will light everyone else's candles. And they will take the light out, symbolizing when we take the light of Christ into a dark world as we celebrate the coming of the light into our darkness.
blessing of Christmas, of family, of friends, and of God be with you today and always.